What if you could have a career where the opportunities are as vast as our nation, where it's not about mission statements, but a shared mission? At U.S. Customs and Border Protection, we go beyond to protect more than borders. From ship to shore, air to ground, cities to local communities, CBP agents and officers are keeping people safe. Join U.S. Customs and Border Protection and go beyond for something far greater than yourself. Learn more at cbp.gov slash careers. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. And Bluster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair. Bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. Time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks, under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, running a high school is usually a difficult task. But Osgood Conklin, principal of Madison High, where Our Miss Brooks teaches English, somehow manages to make it seem even harder. Last week, for instance, it was his anti-gambling crusade. Friday morning at breakfast, I discussed the situation with my landlady. But I didn't think gambling was such a big problem at Madison, Connie. It isn't, Mrs. Davis. But Mr. Stone, head of the Board of Education, is cooperating with the DA's office in a countywide drive against gambling. Naturally, Mr. Conklin hopped on the bandwagon. He's instituted some pretty sweeping reforms in our school. Like what, Connie? Like taking the gum machine out of the cafeteria. <laughs> Plus which he deputized me to stamp out penny matching. Did you encounter any in your class, Connie? Well, there were a couple of kids matching pennies in the coat closet during a study period, but it only went on for about ten minutes. Ten minutes? Didn't you stop them, Connie? Oh, of course I stopped them immediately. May I never get my 55 cents back if I didn't. <laughs> You're not the only teacher at Madison. Why didn't you get Mr. Boynton to help you out? I did. The next two times I investigated that coat closet, I took Mr. Boynton with me. And did you find anyone? Gee, I forgot to look. <laughs> well, if you'll excuse me now, Mrs. Davis, I'd better get ready for school. Walter Denton's picking me up in a few minutes. All right, dear. Oh, before you go, would you do me a favor, Connie? Take this $5 and pay my phone bill this afternoon. I'd send it in, but frankly, I'm afraid it's just about overdue. Me and that absent mind of mine. You are quite a pair. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Mrs. Davis. I'll take it in to the company today. Mr. Conklin was in the same predicament a couple of weeks ago. He asked me to attend to the school phone bill for him. But I thought the Board of Education took care of school bills. They do, but this one was an emergency. It seems the auditor in charge of the funds took an unexpected vacation. An unexpected vacation? As the head of the board put it, he went south with the money. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Conklin gave me the $30, and I paid it the very first thing I... That is, I think it was the very first thing. Connie, you did pay that bill, didn't you? Oh, now I remember. I gave it to Walter Denton to pay. For a minute there, I was worried. <laughs> You gave the school phone bill to Walter Denton to pay, and now you're not worried? No. I can always start looking for another job. <laughs> Would you mind decreasing the speed of this rocket ship just a little, Walter? For you, fair one, I'll make the old chariot tiptoe. <laughs> so jittery on this most beautiful of all possible days. Because, oh fast one, on this most beautiful of all possible days, I've just been stricken with the most horrible of all possible thoughts. Briefly, the school phone bill I gave you two weeks ago. School phone bill. School phone bill. Oh, no, don't tell me you forgot it. School phone bill. 
Oh, now I remember. Oh, wasn't that the bill that was overdue and Mr. Conklin asked you to pay it for him at once? Yes, that's the one. And you had something important to do downtown and told me to take care of it immediately? Exactly. Oh, well, it's a relief to know that's attended to. I knew you wouldn't let me down, Walter. Of course I wouldn't let you down. I told him to pay it at once when I turned it over to Stretch Snodgrass. <laughs> Stretch Snodgrass? Listen, Walter, I know Stretch is a great athlete and a good friend of yours, but he's a bird brain. You're just worrying in advance, Miss Brooks. I'm sure he took care of it. Now, look, there's Stretch going into school now. We'll ask him about it. Hey, Stretch, wait up a minute. Okay. Hi, Walter. Hello, Miss Brooks. Stretch, I'd like to ask you a question. Fire away. Don't think it's not a temptation. <laughs> Do you recall the phone bill Walter gave you to pay two weeks ago? Remember, Stretch? I told you it was urgent. Urgent? Oh, oh, yeah. Well, wasn't that the phone bill Mr. Conklin gave Miss Brooks to pay in a hurry? That's right. It was overdue, and I gave it to Walter and told him to pay it without delay. Yeah, and I had something very important to do myself that day, so I gave it to you and I told you to take care of it immediately. Sure, sure. I remember it all now. Then you took care of it. Absolutely. When I handed that bill to my sister, I told her to pay it at once. <laughs> to whom it may concern. Copy this phone bill and send it along with ten cents to five of your friends. And if no one breaks the chain, <laughs> who knows, someday you may be the lucky recipient of a very low number at Alcatraz. <laughs> I've straightened out your office for you, Daddy. Thank you, Harry. I'm certainly glad the telephone company gave you a new number. So am I. The past few days have been quite an ordeal, I can tell you. I still don't know how those telephone people could give a disc jockey the same number as mine. <laughs> it was just a mistake, Daddy. I'm sure it won't happen again. It better not. Those ridiculous song requests had me frantic. Imagine I get down to my office, haven't even said good morning to a soul, and ten people call up and say, good night, Irene. <laughs> well, it's all over, and you have a brand new number. Well, not a minute too soon. Mr. Stone is coming over to discuss our anti-gambling campaign this afternoon. I still don't understand why the board is so interested in the district attorney's gambling crusade. It's very simple, my dear. They're merely cooperating with all local agencies to run down the head of a big gambling syndicate purported to be operating in this immediate vicinity. Actually, the police haven't the faintest idea of the man's identity. They don't know anything about him at all? Just that he's referred to as the big boy. <laughs> the big boy? Well, that's some clue, isn't it? Yes, yes, at least they won't go around looking for a girl. <laughs> now, Harriet, if you'll excuse me, I have many... Oh, I'll get it. Hello? Hello, this is Dutch. Give me 200 across the board on Harbor Song and a toy, huh? <laughs> uh, what, what's that? What number do you want? Main 5463. Let's see. Yes, this is Main 5463, but I'm... Well, then give me 200 across on Harbor Song and the Third. <laughs> Harbor Song? You, you must have the wrong number. Oh, I'm... please, you don't have to be so cagey. We got protection now. Hey, this is Ben a bookie, isn't it? No, this is Osgood the principal. <laughs> I mean, this is... There must be some mistake. Look, the big boy gave us this number to call for track conditions, latest odds, and laying off bets. And a big boy don't make no mistakes. The big boy? Yeah. <laughs> now use your head and play ball. What? Oh, we'll use your head and play ball. <laughs> 200 across on Harbor Song, huh? Goodbye. What's going on, Daddy? Harry, this is terrible. I should have quit while I was a disc jockey. <laughs> By some fiendish mistake, the telephone company has given me the same number as a bookmaker. Now, calm down, well, well, Daddy. All you have to do is call the company and ask them to change it again. But it took three days to change it last time, and Mr. Stone is coming here this afternoon. There's only one way out. Harriet, you've got to rush to the phone company and get a repairman to disconnect this phone immediately. All right, Daddy, but I wish you'd relax. <laughs> There's really nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about, she says. What if Harbor Song wins? <laughs> Go 
gosh, Miss Brooks, I thought you'd never come out in the hall. It couldn't be helped, Stretch. My contract here calls for me to teach a little English every day. I'm sorry. Oh, don't be sorry. Most of them kids of yours need to be learned plenty. <laughs> well, I just want to tell you I checked up on that phone bill for you. You see, I don't want anybody to go around incinerating that I'm undependable. <laughs> I don't blame you. That kind of incinerating would burn me up, too. <laughs> what did you find out about the bill? Well, luckily, my sister realized how important it was. Oh, wonderful. Then she took care of it. I'll say she did. She gave it to my mother to pay. <laughs> now your worries are really over. My mother is just as dependable as I am. That's no way for a child to talk about his parents. Looks <laughs> we're cooked. That phone bill couldn't have been paid. The telephone man is here to disconnect the phone. What? Where is he, Walter? He's right down the hall. He just asked me how to find Mr. Conklin's office, but I stalled him off. I gave him directions to another place entirely. But that's only a temporary stay. Tell me where you directed him, and I'll go find him. Where I directed him, you can't go. <laughs> Miss Brooks, he's coming back now. Uh, pardon me, ma'am, uh, but uh, could you tell me how to get to Mr. Conklin's office? Mr. Conklin's office? Who's Mr. Conklin? Well, I don't know, but my orders read, uh, disconnect phone in Mr. Osgood Conklin's office. Oh, that Mr. Conklin. You must have been carrying those orders around for quite a while, young man. What do you mean? He died ten years ago. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, what about his office? His office? Oh, that's been converted into a student coat closet. Coat closet? Then why did this uh, kid direct me to... Everybody makes mistakes. <laughs> the phone company must have made a mistake in your instructions. You'd better go back and tell them about it. Okay. Uh, well, that happens once in a while. But I still can't get over this kid sending me on such a wild goose chase. Me either. Seems like a very strange place to be looking for a wild goose. <laughs> Brush your teeth with Colgate. Colgate Dental Cream. It cleans your breath. Water toothpaste. Water cleans your teeth. Colgate toothpaste. Cleans your breath. Water toothpaste. Water cleans your teeth. Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. More than two years' research showed the Colgate way of brushing teeth right after eating helps stop more decay for more people than ever before reported in dentifrice history. Yes, the Colgate way stopped tooth decay best, better than any other home method of oral hygiene. No other toothpaste or powder, ammoniated or not, has proof of such results. And you should know that Colgate's, while not mentioned by name, was the only toothpaste used in the research on tooth decay recently reported in Reader's Digest. Yes, Colgate Dental Cream, and only Colgate Dental Cream, was used in this research. So always use Colgate's to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. And when you follow the Colgate way, Colgate Dental Cream stops tooth decay best. Brush your teeth with Colgate's. Colgate Dental Cream, it cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What a cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. Well, even after the repairman left, I was still jittery for fear he'd come back and reveal the truth about my negligence to Mr. Conklin. It afforded some relief, however, to sit in the cafeteria at lunchtime and pour my baleful story into the handsome ears of Mr. Boynton. Well, now, now, let's see if I've got this straight, Miss Brooks. Two weeks ago, Mr. Conklin gave you the school phone bill, told you it was overdue and must be paid at once. You gave it to Walter Denton. Walter Denton gave it to Stretch Snodgrass. Stretch Snodgrass gave it to his sister. And the green grass grew all around. All around. <laughs> it's no use talking, Mr. Boynton. I'm probably in big trouble. Supposing that repairman comes back again to disconnect the phone. Well, isn't there some way to pay the bill before that happens? How? The $30 Mr. Conklin gave me, I gave to Walter with the bill, and he gave it to... Well, we've been all through that. Temporarily, we've got to assume it's gone. And the point is, where am I going to get another $30? Well, perhaps some other member of the faculty might help. That's what friends are for, to help one another. Now, I consider myself a friend of yours, Miss Brooks, and... Well, I want you to know I'm prepared to assist you in this matter. You mean I can count on you for... Two dollars. 
I- I'll canvass the rest of the faculty for the remainder. I know they'll come through for you. You think so, Mr. Boynton? Oh, take my word for it. They'll help you to a man. Right now, I'd rather they just help me to some money. <laughs> Well, if you'll excuse me, Miss Brooks, I'll go see if you were the... Pardon me, Mr. Boynton. And Miss Brooks, he's back. The telephone man is back. No, where is he, Walter? Well, Stretch and I caught him as he was entering the building, right outside Mr. Conklin's office. You didn't let him get into Mr. Conklin's office. Tell me that you thought of a way to stall him again. Well, I didn't, but Stretch thought of a wonderful way. How? He's sitting on his chest. <laughs> Daddy, I brought you a sandwich. I figured you'd be too upset to eat in the cafeteria today. Oh, you're right, Harriet. Why doesn't that confounded telephone man get here? If Mr. Stone arrives before this phone is disconnected, I... But I don't understand, Daddy. The phone company said they sent a man over much earlier today. I know all about that. But when I called them to send him back, they claimed I died ten years ago. (laughs) But that's ridiculous. Thank you, my dear. However, if that fellow doesn't come back, I don't I've want got to... an idea. Why don't you just pull the wire out yourself? What? Me commit a malicious mischief against the telephone company's property? You forget, Harriet, your father is the principal of a great high school. And a high school principal does not resort to such measures, no matter what the emergency. But it might be the only way Stop out. Stop goading me, Harriet. <laughs> I'm just not physically equipped to try pulling that telephone wire out of the wall. Again. <laughs> You are, Stretch. Walter told me what happened. It was the only way, Miss Brooks. I had to do it. I suppose so, but you were taking an awful chance right outside the principal's office, too. It couldn't be helped. I guess not. Now get off the man's chest, Stretch. Yes, (sighs) ma'am. This is extremely decent of you. (laughs) Well, you see, sir, Stretch here probably thought you were a prowler on account of that black bag you're carrying. That's about it, isn't it, Stretch? About... Well, I don't know why all this is going on, but right after you told me Mr. Conklin was dead, the telephone company told me he was alive. Well, everyone's entitled to his opinion. (laughs) Oh, you must have wanted Mr. Conklin Jr. It's Mr. Conklin Sr. who passed on. (laughs) Well, I'm glad that's cleared up. Now, where's Junior's office? I've got to uh, take care of his phone. (laughs) Phone? You mean you've come to reconnect it? No, I've come to disconnect it. Oh, what a shame. The company sent somebody over to do that an hour ago. Well, you've certainly bagged your quota of wild geese today, haven't you? <laughs> well, I don't mind telling you it's been a discouraging experience. Well, I'll go back and check in again. This is what I get for not listening to my mother. She said that uh, she wanted me to take up the timpanies. Uh, goodbye for now. <laughs> you know, I'm going to miss him. Miss Brooks, who was that man who just left the building? Man, Mr. Conklin? Uh, Yes, yes, the man with the brown bag. There was no man, Mr. Conklin. And it was a black bag. (laughs) Thank you, Snodgrass. (laughs) Uh, Step into my office, please, Miss Brooks. Yes, sir. Uh, Now, about that man, the one with the black and brown bag... Was he by any chance the telephone repair man I'd been expecting? Oh, were you expecting a telephone repair man? Uh, Yes, yes, Miss Brooks. I've gotten someone else's telephone number by mistake. A mistake which could take three days to rectify, whereas it only takes ten minutes to disconnect the phone from the wall. Oh, is that what he was here for? Uh, Precisely. And now may I ask why you so obviously dismissed him? Well, in a few ill-chosen words, Mr. Conklin, I didn't pay the phone bill when you gave me the money two weeks ago, and I thought the repairman was here to disconnect your phone because of my negligence, and I'd like to remain on the premises just long enough to say goodbye to some of my friends. I thank you. (laughs) I never heard such gibberish in all my born days. I've got more serious worries than a delinquent phone bill on my mind, Miss Brooks. You mean it's all right, Mr. Conklin? No, it's not all right, but I'll take that up later. Whatever you do, don't mention your omission to Mr. Stone when he gets here. Mr. Stone? You've got to help me, Miss Brooks. Mr. Stone will be here at any moment to discuss my gambling campaign. However, some very strange phone calls are liable to interrupt my conference. That's why I want you to sit in on this meeting. Me? 
But, Mr. Conklin, I'll say that you're taking notes on our discussion. Your main function, however, is to answer the phone. Oh, that's him. But I don't understand, Mr. Conklin. What kind of phone calls have been There's no time for explanations now. Be right there, Mr. Stone. Just act perfectly casual, no matter what you hear when you pick up that receiver. And remember, don't repeat a word of it. Well, Mr. Stone, come in, come in. Thank you, Osgood. Uh, Miss Brooks here is going to take some notes on our anti-gambling discussion. Uh, that is, if you have no objection. Not at all. Nice to see you again, Miss Brooks. You seem to be in the pink. Want a bet? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's nice to see you again, too, Mr. Stone. Uh, uh, sit down, Mr. Stone. Uh, here's a comfortable chair. Miss Brooks, you sit down by that desk with the phone on it. Yes, sir. Well, what's the news from the district attorney's office, Mr. Stone? They haven't made too much progress, Osgood. It's rather a difficult task in view of the fact they don't know just who the big boy is. And two, we can't seem to find out where his syndicate headquarters are located. But they do think it's in this area. Definitely. Oh, good, good. Then it's just a question of time before the bell rings for his final round. <laughs> Would you get that, please, Miss Brooks? Yes, sir. Hello? This is Dutch again. Uh, who's this? This is Miss Brooks. Uh, well, what'll they take off next? Now they got a doll answering the phone. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, tell me, sugar, what do you think the track conditions are at Narragansett, huh? Frankly, I haven't given it much thought. Who, who's that you're talking to, Miss Brooks? It's Dutch, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> please make it brief, Miss Brooks. Tell him we're busy. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Dutch, but we're quite occupied at the moment. And occupied? We... Oh, look, now, don't give me no rush, Jack. Frenchie told me I should call whenever I feel like it. Oh. Mr. Conklin, Dutch says that Frenchie told him to call. <laughs> Dutch? Frenchie? Who are they? A couple of delegates we know from the United Nations. <laughs> Just hang up, Miss Brooks. Hang up at once. Yes, Mr. Conklin. Bye, Dutch. <clears throat> now, as I started to tell you, Mr. Stone, we've done wonders here at Madison. Firstly, by eliminating all vending machines, I've destroyed the impulse to deposit coins in slots of any kind. He's even discouraged use of the public telephone. Oops, naughty word. <laughs> the instinct to gamble must be crushed at the earliest opportunity. One of the reasons it's so difficult to track down this big boy mob is because of the unwitting protection afforded them by the uninformed. They operate in candy stores, skating rinks, even schools. Even schools? <laughs> nice timing, Dutch. Hello? Look, I'm tired of playing games. How's the weather at Narragansett? Well, what do I know about the weather at Narragansett? <laughs> Just a moment. Narragansett's a big racetrack. Hand me that phone. Oh, no! <laughs> Hello, Dutch. The conditions at Narragansett are weather clear, track fast. Now, would you like to make a bet? A uh, hatchet man should be a cinch on a fast track, and we got a load bet on him with us. I better lay off about uh, 600 across the board, huh? 600 on hatchet man. It's a bet. Ah, good, good. That's one thing about the big boy. He makes you pay through the nose, but he gives you the service, eh? Huh? Well, so long. So long. Well, Osgood, that was a very revealing phone call. Uh, uh, now, now, just a minute, Mr. Stone. You know where I stand on gambling. Why, we've eliminated penny matching, bottle cap tossing. <laughs> and any minute, we're going to chop up the weighing machine. <laughs> come in, come in, whoever you are. Oh, pardon me, Mr. Conklin, but could I speak with Miss Brooks for just a moment? Uh, I suppose so, Boynton, but please be quick about it. Oh, yes, sir. Here, Miss Brooks, here's $20 toward the money you owe for the phone bill. Well, thanks, Mr. Boynton. Oh, don't thank me. Thank your fellow teachers. I didn't have time to reach them all, but everyone I asked to chipped in and said he knew it was a safe bet. Did you hear that, Mr. Conklin? The other teachers are all chipping in. Mr. Boynton could only get $20 now, but they all know it's a safe bet. <laughs> Safe bet, eh? Miss Brooks, tell me, is this money for the hatchet man, too? Naturally, but I don't think that's a very flattering way to refer to Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Perhaps he'd like it better if I refer to him by his real name. Eh, big boy? <laughs> big boy? <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Stone, there's been a frightful misunderstanding. Miss Brooks, tell Mr. Stone what this money is for. But, Mr. Conklin, you told me not to mention it. Oh, mention it! Mention it! <laughs> Well, Mr. Stone, this money is for a phone bill that I neglected to pay. I would say your telephone service is functioning admirably. <laughs> Let me explain, Mr. Stone. Just today I received a new phone number in answer to a request I made three days ago. Why did you want your number changed three days ago? Because he hasn't got a recording of Good Night, Irene. <laughs> Good night, Irene. Good night. Come on, Mr. Barney. <laughs> What's going on here? That's what I'd like to know. Why don't you come clean, big boy? <laughs> Will you please stop calling me by that name, Mr. Stone? The phone company happened to give me the former number of a bookmaker, and it was too late to have it changed before you got here. Balderdash! You <laughs> sent for a telephone repairman and had the phone disconnected. Yes, why didn't you send for a telephone repairman? I mean, he did send for a repairman, Mr. Stone, but I thought he was coming to disconnect the phone because I hadn't paid the bill, and I sent him away. Unpaid phone bills mixed up. Num you know what I think? I think you're all in this together. Mr. Stone, I can't say that I like your attitude. Force yourself. <laughs> Miss Brooks, can you give me one shred of evidence to support this fantastic phone bill story? Well, sir, Excuse I... Excuse me, everybody, but the door was open, so I thought I'd just botch on in. <laughs> I've got the news you've been waiting for all day. Really, Stretch? What part of the school is on fire? <laughs> no, it's about the phone bill. I just found out my mother paid it. She paid it? Sure, here's the receipt. Well, I guess this answers your request for evidence, Mr. Stone. Here, take a look at this. Hmm. Just what does this receipt mean, Miss Brooks? Read it, you'll see. I already have. Now, suppose you read it. Certainly. Received from Madison High School, $30. Signed, the Consolidated Gas Company. <laughs> Miss our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumas' magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap, Better than a liquid, Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen. Soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight? Yes, tonight, try Luster Cream shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, we finally convinced Mr. Stone that we weren't running a gambling syndicate at Madison High School. And when I got home, I sat down at the kitchen table with a cup of coffee and the afternoon papers. You look pretty worn out, Connie. Why don't you stretch out and take a nap? I will, Mrs. Davis, but first I've got to call Mr. Conklin right away. I just saw something in the paper I've got to tell him about. What is it, Connie? His two-dollar parlay on Harbor Song and Hatchet Man paid $32. <laughs> Burn Smith reminding you to tune in next week to another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo, the soft, glamorous, corruptible hair, and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis, with the music of Wilbur Hatch. You want a beauty soap for a beauty bath. And your bath becomes a beauty bath when you change to proper cleansing with palm olive soap. For bathing with this beauty soap brings you the full beautifying effects of palm olive's mild and gentle lather. 
proved by doctors to bring most women lovelier complexions in just 14 days. Bath size palm olive is designed to give you everything you need for all over beauty care. Fragrance for daintiness, mildness for loveliness, purity for gentleness, big bath size for thriftiness. So get big bath size palm olive. So mild, so pure, so right for all of you. Be sure to listen to Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday over the same network. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. Stay tuned now for Jack Benny. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to Chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.